A True Tale Most Tragic, a poem by my mother, Jean. My daughter Claire has a heart so soft and eyes often wet with compassion. She was six years old on this, and not very bold on the day of this tale that I fashion. I was baking fresh bread on this day of woe and had just set the dough to leaven when she rushed in the door so upset and heart sore with a wail of a cry that reached heaven. Here comes a headache, I said to myself, an Excedrin one, number nine. But the sorrow and sobbing, the hiccups and bobbing quite melted that cold heart of mine. I was excellent fodder for my mother's writing. She was not above using my pain to express herself artistically. This particular poem was written to commemorate a particularly devastating moment in my young life, one of many. You see, when I was quite young, we lived on five acres in Washington State, a small farm with two Highland cows, Fergus and Mari, a Shetland pony, Cheyenne, two rabbits, Bucky and Snowy, and lots and lots of chickens and ducks. Before I was enrolled in school, my hobby was finding dead animals and giving them proper burials. I spent my days in solitude, walking the land, talking to myself and my imaginary friends, most of whom were also animals, and seeking out the unfortunate ones who had perished. Nothing filled my little four-year-old heart with quite so much joy as finding a dead animal and rushing home with the cadaver in my hands to report to my mother, look what I found, and then planning the ceremony. What container would the lizard or snake or vole be buried in? What would I make the cross out of? Where would we bury it? What would I say over the grave? I took such pleasure in the details, in the process of dispatching them to heaven. My mother was distant, distracted. I don't believe she ever really wanted children, but that's what you did in her day. Young women took speed to stay thin, worked secretarial jobs to find husbands, and had babies to be fulfilled. I believe she had much bigger dreams than that. That she wanted for so much more, but she ended up with two girls instead. And she'd say, well, as children go, you're better than so-and-so's dreadful kids. <laughs> Despite her attitude about motherhood, she indulged my little hobby, and I can't imagine why. I mean, I wish I knew what went through her mind every time I came home with another dead animal in my hands, my bare hands, mind you. No doubt, I cried every time. I mean, why, why did it have to die? Life is so cruel. Why didn't she put a stop to me by simply telling me I couldn't keep bringing home dead animals? It's taken me a long time to put it all together, but I believe I finally know why. My mother was a writer, a phenomenal letter writer and an amazing poet, and she had a bit of the tortured artist in her, and she was also prone to depression and wistfulness. The poem that crushed me when I first heard it and mortified me as a teenager ultimately thrilled me as an adult, knowing what care she took in crafting it. She felt the weight of the world pressing in on her. I think she recognized this in me, and she didn't want to squash it the way her mother had done to her. Claire went out with a spoon to pick up the corpse while I looked for a suitable coffin. I found a bandana and a box from Havana for a casket to carry him off in. But in a moment, my ears were assaulted with loud cries of outrage hysterical. A car had gone past. Claire let out a gasp. The corpse was engraved in a steel-belted radial. <laughs> I maintained my cool in the midst of it all and behaved in a manner blasé. I kept a straight face, though a terminal case, and hummed, do you know the way to San Jose? 